This is ridiculous. This isn't a road. Good morning, welcome back to Japan on our mad around the world drive. Not a bad spot, we just had to show you this little spot. We parked up, we found this car park. Trudy's just over there on top of that cliff. Look at this, fantastically quiet spot. <sighs> We've missed the coastline and uh, this wonderful blue sea. I think if you take me back, five years ago to when I was sat at my office desk. I never thought that it would be possible I could be here talking to you, looking at that view. Travel is about the gorgeous feeling of teetering in the unknown. Anthony Bourdain. Coffee's made. Okay, before we set off, we're going to show you the route for today. We're getting a map on the side of the van. Okay, so this morning we're waking up right at the end of this peninsula here. So the plan over the next few days, we're going to drive slightly backwards on ourselves because we've heard there's an absolutely amazing temple, a little bit unique that we have to see here. And then we're going to follow the coastline round, wind up and then come out just north of Kyoto. A busy few days. Mm. Oh, I just, I love it in the sun. It always looks amazing, green and beautiful through these little villages. Okay, so it was 800 to get in uh, for the parking. Wow, look at this for a view. Check out that waterfall. My goodness, look at the detail on that building. Wow. That is pretty impressive. So is this hill that we're driving up. Good job, love. Hill starts, my favorite thing of the day. <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling like you're going to be lucky to get your van here. Oh, hi, Ogazamash. <laughs> I think the parking might be a slight issue <laughs> at the end. <laughs> yes, there's an English van rocking up at a temple in Japan. That one? Okay, perfect. You're going to reverse in? Yeah. Let me jump out and see you back. Yeah, because there's overhanging roofs and everything. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay, we've managed to park up. Right, let's go and have a little look around. Located in the mountains a few miles inland from the coastal town of Katsura, this unusual complex is home to two religious sites, the Buddhist Seigan Toji Temple and the Shinto Kumano Naji Shrine. During the Meiji period, there was a forced separation of Shinto and imported Buddhism. And so it's quite rare to find a religious complex like this one, 
where they are located next to each other. That's one seriously big bell. Such a dragon carved out in the woodwork on the side of this bell. Look at the detail on that. Isn't that amazing? Speechless again. <laughs> But look at this come come look at look at this for a view <laughs> oh wow we were met with the most spectacular view of the temple's three-story pagoda and cascading waterfall the naji waterfall has an uninterrupted drop of 133 meters which makes it the tallest in japan so the temple behind me is actually the oldest building in the area. The original site, the first temple was built back in the uh, fourth century. This one was built all the way back in 1855. Wow, the wooden structures on this are absolutely amazing. What a wonderful place. What a fantastic view. Immaculately sculpted gardens. What I think Japanese gardeners have got to be the best gardeners in the world. Controversial, but I think true. It doesn't matter if you're religious or not. There is something immensely calming about visiting here. And we took a moment to enjoy this rare tranquility. As we entered the Kumano Naji Shrine, we were greeted by a large tree this is no ordinary tree. It's an 850-year-old sacred camphor tree. As it's grown over the years, it's developed a hollow, walkable passage that runs through its trunk. It's believed that if you write your wish and carry it through the tree before leaving it at the shrine, your wish will come true. Okay, 300, 300 yen. Now, is it the same as in, like, England? If you tell someone your wish, it won't come true? Probably. So I'm not Best not to tell you. I'm not telling. Probably got something about making it at home in one piece. Together. <laughs> Together. 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 <laughs> After paying a small donation, we picked up the small wooden board and started writing. With our wish in hand, Marianne ducked down to enter the sacred tree and passed through the tunnel before climbing the stairs to exit the tree on the other side. With such a challenging drive back to the UK, we need all the help we can get. And who knows, maybe our wish will come true. As we admired the brightly colored shrine, we noticed a large grass circle. We watched as people performed the summer purification, known as Chinawa Kuguri, the tradition of walking through the hoop in a figure of eight. It's meant to cleanse any impurities from the first half of the year and give good health for the second. After you write your name on a piece of paper shaped as a person, it's presented as an offering to the shrine. After, they would approach the shrine to pray, but before doing so, would pull on a rope to ring a bell, which is believed to let the gods know that someone is about to talk to them. Oh, another epic view from the shrine. Wow. So we've come back into the van, 39 degrees, and we've got a little bit of a problem because the side door has dropped again. It won't open, something's, something's not right, and we can't open it to close it. Um, we need to go find some shade because it's too hot. 
Yeah, the roof. I just tried to open the roof and the the bracket has actually melted. The plastic bracket seems to have melted off the roof. I can't tell you how I could fry eggs on that. The problem is we can't, we can't actually work on the van here because it's so touristy and everyone's, everyone's stopping to look at the van. Um, so yeah, we just need to go to go and find a quiet pullover in the shade. I can get the tools out and have a look. Okay, we just found an area with a bit of shade. So we're going to stop and have a quick look at the door. You can see that it's not closing properly. There's a, there's a big gap. I can almost get my fingers in it. I'm not sure. It's the lock at the top. Okay, we've managed to open the door. And it seems to be this lock here. The problem was we couldn't open or close the door. It seemed like one of the locks had seized. I manually closed the lock again to test it. Marianne was pulling the handle, but the lock wasn't opening. It was releasing the lock, but either the spring had gone or there was so much dirt in it that it wasn't opening. It needs WD-40. But we don't have any. We're hours from an auto store. The only problem is we're not sure if we close this door, whether it's ever going to open again. Well, it's getting access to be able to click the click to get it open. You know, well, you can't because your kitchen's in the way. Because you can't take the door panel off and access it from behind because of this. I continued trying to loosen the lock, but the door handle was still not opening it. Without WD-40, we're officially stuck here. Okay, so we were just saying that we need to go to Tanabe to an Autobax to buy WD-40. And whilst I was stood here, part of the toolbox fell out of the boot. And I'm not sure whether you're superstitious, but on the floor is a can of WD-40 that I actually, we both didn't realize that we actually had. Wait, hold on a minute. What the hell just happened? I couldn't quite get my head round it. I mean, what's the chance of that happening? My dad gave me that when we left. He said you need that. So to Marianne's dad, £2.90, well spent, WD-40. You gave us this when we left and said you'll probably need that. Thanks, Pa. And somehow, somebody just threw it out of the boot for me. So we're going to give it a spray. Okay, the WD-40 is had a chance. The moment of truth. So I'm going to lock this door. Do you want to pull the handle and we'll see whether it goes up? Inside or out? Just pull it. Yes. Did it work? All the way. All the way. Phew. I love WD-40. I love my dad more. Thanks, Pa. The other one might have dropped a little bit. Good job. Stick with me, kid. <sighs> okay, a little bit of good news. We've heard back from the Chinese tour company who have said that actually going to Turkey A is not a problem as far as they're aware for getting our Chinese visa. He's also said that if for some reason we can't get our Chinese visa in South Korea, we could fly to Chengdu. Apparently they've got some kind of special arrangement where you can apply for a Chinese visa on arrival. But that would mean that the 30 day allowance would start from that point. We'd then have to fly back to South Korea, book a boat for Trudy, get on the ship with Trudy, get to China and drive all the way across China within 30 days, which sounds a little bit stressful. We're also a little bit concerned that Trudy is covered in YouTube stickers and YouTube isn't allowed in China. We also have lots of cameras, microphones, and everything that else that goes with being a YouTuber, uh, including a Starlink, uh, which is not allowed in China either. So we're worried that they may confiscate some of those things um, on arrival. 
things like our hard drives, which we've been filming for five years on, if we lost those, it would be devastating. Um, so we've contacted the Chinese tour company to see if they can seek any clarification on whether these would be a problem with Chinese customs. I'll drive up the coastline. Look how blue that water is. This is insane. We need to find a park up next to the sea so we can jump in and cool off. I think this is what young people call hashtag no filter. <laughs> there is no filter. That is the colour of the water. Wow. My God. Pit stop, I've got, just got to check out this blue water. Oh, it's windy. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Look at this. Why don't we just drive down here? <laughs> Drive down here. Although the fisherman, the fisherman might have something to say, I think. Wow, what a spot! Yeah, if we're lucky, we might find somewhere like that. It's quite hard to find spots on the coast. Okay, we've come down to the uh, seafront down in Tanabe because this town has something very special about it. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know that back in the UK, I used to do Aikido, um, one of my passions and hobbies back home. And this town is where Morihei Ueshiba, um, the founder of Aikido, was born and brought up. And there's a few places in town I want to check before we uh, continue our journey north. Um, fun fact, the curriculum at school, the PE curriculum, includes Aikido. So just next to where we parked Trudy, they've got this wonderful statue. That is uh, Morihei Ueshiba, also known as O-sensei and the founder of Aikido. And right opposite the statue, is the Morihei Ueshiba Museum, which we're just going to go and have a quick look at. Entering the building, the staff welcomed us and kindly escorted us to the main display room. Born in 1883 here in Tanabe, he dedicated his life to the study of martial arts. Realizing that true Budo, victory and peace didn't come from hurting your opponent and so created Aikido, a purely defensive martial art where strength is not required. The museum shared his remarkable life story and how Aikido was developed into what it is today. There was a demonstration video and a mat so you could practice and a library full of Aikido books and DVDs that you could watch whilst you were there. So that was uh, absolutely fascinating for me and uh, I really loved that. And in fact, the staff there were so lovely. They saw us taking a picture by the statue. They came running down the stairs and took a picture of us stood in front of uh, Morihei Ueshiba's statue. We took a short drive to the nearby temple where Morihei Ueshiba was laid to rest. After studying Aikido for so many years, it was such an honor to be here. Before heading out of town, there was just one more spot I had to see. And there you go. That is the plot of land where Morihei Ueshiba was born. And they've got this uh, plaque here. That's mad to think that that's where he was born and grew up. Leaving Tanabe, we went in search of somewhere to park up for the night. So Trudy's obviously 
Oh, it sounds like he's having the same sort of trouble listening to his car. <laughs> so, so it's one of those days today. Not only have we had the door, we've just stopped at this meshy to go to the loo, try and find somewhere to park up for the night. Trudy's got a flat tire. So what we'll do is we'll pump it up now and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. So it looks like we're going tire hunting tomorrow. This is the thing about these travels. You have all these plans and these schedules and it just all goes out the window at the drop of a hat. Everything changes. So we went to the loo. We were literally just pulling out to go to the next rest stop because this one is, is very small. We're not sure whether we're able to sleep here overnight. And uh, I said, oh, look, you know, let's just go, go tomorrow. It's half an hour to the next one. Let's just stay here and go in the morning. And then I just went to the loo, came out and looked at the tire. So if we'd driven off, we'd be changing the tire by the side of the road you somewhere said, else. You just said to me, do you want the good news or the bad news? And I said the bad news and you said there's a flat tire. What was the good news? The toilets are lovely. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why you should always carry a compressor. <laughs> oh, and a sense of humour. And a spare tire. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll get this, we'll get this rock and this will be fine. We'll get it pumped up tonight and, and then, then in the morning we'll know we can change at least where we're parked, we're on the edge as well. So we can jack it up without interfering with everybody. Definitely going down. Is it part of your eyes? Yeah, it's, it's nearly flat. So I just came to pump it up and as soon as I touch the valve, you can hear the, uh, the air coming out. Every night in Japan, you get this music playing. Sounds like a bit like an ice cream truck. It's actually the local town saying, hey, it's six o'clock. Kids, it's time to go home. Or well, it's time to change a tire. Everything comes in threes. So what's, what have we had today? Well, we've had the wind we've had the windscreen wiper the door and the tire so i oh, think yeah. we should be done are we done now we should be done Phew. yeah it's always a risk when you're driving around the world whether you're in a on a motorbike a unimog a four by four or an old fiat ducato van there are always risks that things are going to fail and it just is what it is and we know that like any kind of adventurer you have to plan to have a sense of humor and a mechanic on speed dial. Oh, and a husband who is awesome. <laughs> and a wife that's also awesome. Ah, oh, thanks, babe. Oh, Trudy's all fixed. Can I just say, one for the tread team, Fisher. One for Konnichiwa. the tread team. Yeah. <laughs> Problem sorted. Okay, Ooh, oh, slowly, love, slowly. I am slowly. This is ridiculous. This isn't a road. Look how thin it is. <laughs> <laughs> if anything comes. Oh. Oh. Getting around the tightness of the corner as well. Anything comes. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh my. Easy, Tiger. That's a drop down there. Yeah. yeah. It's alright. We're out the other end, though. Oh. Did you just hold your breath? I think they run out of tarmac for that bit. Yeah. <laughs> this is why they've got so many tunnels going through the mountain. Because look, the edges, they're just. There's just not enough road space for the edges. This is not somewhere you want to get a flat tyre. Oh, don't say that, love. Why'd no, you say well, that? Because we've just had one. And I'm thinking... We haven't got a spare now. No, I know. We will soon. <laughs> we will do tomorrow, hopefully. Uh-oh. Can you see anything? No, it's a spare. We arrived in town before the tire shop opened. 
So we headed into Starbucks to get our latest video uploaded to YouTube. We often dip into local coffee shops to work as they have aircon and usually fast internet. We all have to use public Wi-Fi at some point, whether it's in a cafe, at the airport, or on the train on the way to work. And it's easy to forget sometimes that there's actually people out there that are trying to steal your data. <laughs> and that's why whenever we use public Wi-Fi, we always use Surfshark VPN. Surfshark creates an encrypted tunnel which keeps our data safe. Being so far away from home, could you imagine the stress if our bank account was hacked? <coughs> For the price of the coffee that we bought today, we get to protect ourselves with Surfshark for a whole month. I'd recommend getting the Surfshark One bundle because you get some added benefits like antivirus and webcam protection. Right now, Surfshark is offering Tread the Globe followers an exclusive discount, which includes three months free. To get started, simply click the link in the description below or scan the QR code. Stop it raining again. So we've come down to Autobax to try and repair the tire. So we're gonna try and repair the one where the valve went, so at least we have a spare. Ooh, it's quite nice to have a bit of rain, coolness. All these tires and we can't get one for Trudy. Doesn't make sense, does it? No sense. <laughs> Entering the store, we approached the service counter. With our translator in hand, we waited patiently. Come on, make eye contact. The young guy just pointed at the tablet on the desk, which was all in Japanese and just left. We translated it, but there was nothing that said tire repair. So I don't know, there was nobody inside that could help us. We'll have to find another, we'll have to find another one. <laughs> we decided there must be somebody that could help. So we went back in and tried a different counter. The assistant patiently listened as we explained the situation. And before we knew it, we were following another member of staff who wanted to inspect the tire. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's told us to drive round to the service pit. So uh, yeah, 2,000 yen, that's about 10 pounds. And uh, I think they're gonna repair the valve for us. So, so far, so good. We drove round to the service center and they quickly took the tire off and away to be repaired. It's done, it's off. It's so, going in to be repaired. <laughs> what it is to be young and strong. Ten minutes later, we were putting it back on Trudy. Phew, that's another problem solved. Oh, hold on. We have another one. Okay, so things never go well, do they? So the device that we got made in Turkey, this like locking nut, uh, this Allen key on the end, they made us this locking nut. But the problem is now, it's actually worn out so now we can't take we can't take this tire off again so now we're gonna have to try and see if they sell allen keys oh it's never easy okay so we couldn't find an allen key that size in auto backs so we're just gonna have to keep an eye out for a diy shop and then we think the little pin in the middle we should be able to drill out and then maybe it will work it's never easy we had so much the last week. We've had the door go. We've had the windscreen wiper go. We've had the, we've had a flat tire. We've had 45 degrees in the van. There's like, I just can't even think. The roof broke. There's just yeah. been so much stuff. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, we're still here and we're still going. I can't believe that. Okay, so we've come down to a friend of ours house Hero, <laughs> and in fact he actually owns an RV rental shop but he has just found this and you're not going to believe this it actually fits the locking nut that we made in Turkey that is amazing that is amazing in the evening Hero cooked us a lovely dinner what a couple of days that was 
I couldn't stop thinking about all the strange coincidences that had happened. What was the likelihood that that WD-40 can would fall out of Trudy just as we needed it? And what made me stop Marianne from pulling out of the rest stop when she'd already turned around and was about to pull out? And now, Hero had the exact same size tool that fitted the lock made in Turkey. Maybe, just maybe, that wish at the sacred tree came true. Let's just hope that that luck lasts for the rest of our drive back to the UK.